will be moving to the first symposium that is stay strong and live long and this symposium will tell us about the lifestyle and the modifications that are required to stay strong and live long this symposium will be co-chaired by myself and uh, the my co-chair will be a slme council member uh, and uh, then uh, dr sajita dev singh and uh, we'll be moving straight away into the symposium the first presenter and the resource person will be dr renka jayatis who is a consultant medical nutritionist from mri and expert on medical nutrition and she'll be talking to us on uh, food to live long dr renka jayatis or to you Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Zindika. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Prof. Zindika as uh, president of SLM uh, selecting this uh, topic uh, because he is always innovative and he try to give new things. So this is something we have to really think in the uh, uh, these days. Um, that's for a while that I will uh, share my presentation. Mm. So, um now uh, my topic is food to live uh, long um uh, can you uh, move to the next slide uh, pamun so if we really look at the food i mean the first i thought that i should uh, tell you about the food then and now i mean uh, because we know most of our ancestors have been living long and the some and they are our centenarians also so how that it has gone so when we look at our diets has really undergone the enormous changes just in the past 50 years or so at the same time there are individually but at the same time there are some people that they, they are celebrating their 100th birthday today um but they have been raised on the very different kind of diet than the children born nowadays uh, compared to the few decades ago so these uh, differences may be the major reason why people in their 30s and 40s are struggling to stay alive today next slide please so uh, with that i thought i will come up with the 13 key, key food uh, to live longer uh, uh, next one so the next uh, first of all i thought that uh, first uh, we will be always uh, think about living but at the same time the quality living so for the quality living you need the kind of uh, good hair good nail good skin so for that the first thing is promoting the healthy collagen production so that will be the first thing i am going to discuss about it what are the kind of food that we need for this healthy collagen production and the, because we need that building of the collagen every day and all the time so there are key three key uh, amino acids which is necessary for the collagen production those are lysine proline and glycine and the, all of us know lysine is essential amino acid so we have to take it from the uh, food but proline and glycine are non essential amino acids then the, we can um, uh, build uh, inside the um, uh, body but lysine so when we look at what are the kind of food items we need the lysine we, because we know that rice is lack of lysine because lysine the rice is our staple food uh so in addition to that then then the, we have to take our uh, sufficient quantity of the lysine from the food that will come from the red meat pork and the poultry as well as if it is uh, especially in the palms and cheese i think i know that these are not very common food for sri lanka but uh, the sri lankan common food wise it is legumes and avocado those are the other two things we can always think of and then the proline uh, when we look at uh, proline i mean though it is uh, you can uh, build inside your body but at the same time you have to see that what are the kind of food that we have to consume there are also legume come as one of the thing so you can see that legume that you can give proline and lysine both but at the same time the citrus food and the asparagus and the, all these things will also come as and cabbages and the will come as another kind of thing and the third one is glycine even glycine you can see legume is coming as another item of the food and in addition to that meat fish and dairy products so uh, these are the uh, things we have to really think of when we are building up our collagen uh, in the body because which are the things which is necessary for our healthy nail healthy skin as well as for our healthy hair next slide please um 
Then um, uh, the another uh, important thing for the collagen production is vitamin C. Because nowadays we are talking about the vitamin C also because of the COVID. But even for the collagen production, that to remix the collagen, you need the vitamin C. But all of us know that a lot of vitamin C uh, food in the country, uh, the citrus food and the green leaves and the uh, kind of, I have just listed out the uh, little bit of rare things first, that because uh, then the, what the people can to really think of uh, consuming those things also, like broccoli and the things. And for the certain kind of people, as well as the uh, sweet and the white potatoes. And these are the other things we had to think about. But uh, our we our, our known very rich uh, vitamin C products are the nilli and the guava. But at the same time, uh, vitamin C, uh, in addition to it, will help us to fight infections also. So this is very important. Nowadays, that there are a lot of research going on. Now, uh, some of the these uh, legends, they say, I mean, legends of this uh, live, live long um, uh, best authors and everybody, they are now talking about taking vitamin C as kind of 1000 milligram BD. But those are not evidence based yet. But the, still, that people are really talking about uh, how uh, the, how important this vitamin C uh, take. I mean, the in the including in our daily diet. Next slide. Then, in addition to that, uh, for the collagen production production, we need other uh, supportive food also. So that's like um, biotin, polyphenol, and sun protection. And the biotin, we know that there are a lot of supplements of biotin in the um, uh, market. But most of the things, when you really see that they are kind of, they are the uh, safer limits, they have gone beyond the safer limit. So still that these things are not really uh, given scientific evidences where the supplements are better. But the, always we can take the biotin from our food. So you can see that in the picture, what are the kind of top biotin rich food and the, it's in the nuts and the uh, the spinach and things, you can always get uh, this biotin. And the other thing is polyphenol. I mean, the, we have forgotten our good polyphenol source uh, of tea because it is tea. But nowadays, people have shifted from plain tea to milk tea. So milk tea won't give you the polyphenol. But if you drink it as uh, plain tea, you will get your polyphenol. So that's a kind of very common source for Sri Lankans. But at the kind of thing, now we have changed our dietary practices and uh, now we are not really going to get our polyphenol while uh, taking our milk tea two or three times per day. And uh, especially for the uh, country like us, we are always with sun. And the, we know with the climate change and the, with the ozone layer and the, our sun exposure and the things are now have changed. So the uh, once we are talking about the getting the sunlight. At the same time, now we have to think about the sun protection also. Because uh, now with the, the skin that you have to always look at the sun protection, uh, keep up and the take in umbrellas or something for the, you have to protect your skin if you want to maintain the better uh, skin uh, in the future. Next slide. Um, so the second point I am going to talk about the high quality carbs. Because we are living on with carbs. But at the same time, we have to see, uh, really select what are the high quality carbs and the, why that we need the high quality carbs to live long. And the, because high quality carbs are packed with nutrients, you need carbs in life. And the, some people, they don't eat carbs at all and the, they live on only the protein and the fat. But without carb, you don't have a kind of day, the day to day, your energy maintenance and the uh, with the good quality carbs, it will really uh, help you to slow digestion and the speed up your metabolism and it will help to burn fat also. And the, sometimes it will really help to lose weight. I mean, they are the new evidences and the, now they say that uh, having the high quality carbs are much better. And the, at the same time that they, these high quality carbs mainly depend on the what the types of carbohydrates and the amount of carbohydrate. This, these two things we have to always think about whenever we are uh, labeling a food kind of things, which is good, which is uh, bad or something, because we have to always think about how much of carbohydrate, carbohydrate is in that food and the, what's the type of carbohydrate, whether it is a complex carbohydrate or whether it is a, a plain, simple starch or all these things you have to really think about rather than just labeling the uh, every food as a carbohydrate, bad carbohydrate. Next slide. 
so the, these are the kind of examples of the high quality carbs. So I, I, I was trying to um, uh, really list out the things in the Sri Lanka and the, what people don't eat. At the same time, the, something it is not in Sri Lanka, but it is popular among people. Well, one of the things I thought sweet potatoes and especially the uh, yellow sweet potatoes. Now it is uh, uh, available in the market. And the, but uh, when you really look at the sweet potatoes, it has less starch and the less calorie and the, it has very superior beta carotene. But when we compare about the amount of carbohydrate, but finally that uh, it is not the amount and the type and the things that's what I was telling that in that way, sweet potato is one of the very good high quality carb products. And especially for the people who are work, working out, well, this is also the very good um, slow energy releasing product also. And then the bananas and the other thing is people were really having very scared of eating bananas because of the fructose and the diabetes and the things. But now uh, with the new evidences, banana has become a one of the soup kind of very good food for um, most of the um, recommendations and the, which is very high with potassium. We know with the potassium, we can really maintain our blood sugar levels as well as it is, it has carbohydrate, but and the, uh, to a certain extent, it has a low GI and the high fiber. The, and the, that's the reason we say that don't eat uh, uh, two, three bananas at once and they eat one banana and the, uh, eat two bananas per day is actually that is the kind of recommendation which is coming up now. And another excellent food uh, carb product is pumpkin because nowadays pumpkin is uh, in plenty and with the Halloween season and the things. And the what Sri Lanka, what we are not much using um, uh, pumpkin. Uh, which contain vitamin A, calcium, and all antioxidants. And this is one of the very good kind of food. And uh, we had to think of um, uh, consuming this in the different ways. And it may be pumpkin uh, curries. Pump I mean, that is a must of the most of the popular food item in Sri Lanka. And a lot of the time people get fed up with the eating pumpkin curries. And they can go for the pumpkin soup, pumpkin pies, pumpkin pudding, and the all sort of things are the different options. And the oats, I, uh, though it is not Sri Lankan one, but it's very popular among the people. So I thought that just to mention it, because it's also the good one with the low GI and the, it has a lot of soluble fiber. Then the next one is the beetroot. I mean, this is another one. Beetroot has also a kind of very uh, common um, kind of phobia, saying it will increase uh, my sugar level. But when you really look at the type and the amount of sugar, it is really, it is having a lot of dietary fiber. And it is having the inorganic nitrates that which will help to maintain our blood pressures. So in addition to that, like the barley and the things we have been using as children, but now we don't really think, but it is not a Sri Lankan one, but still, I mean, I'm just uh, writing it because still some people are using barley and the black cowpea, kurakkan millet, and the other one is a popcorn and the Popcorn actually it is a nice kind of uh, snack because it is sugar free and the, it's a low calorie and the, because you can eat a big volume with the small calories. So these are the kind of high quality carbs and the people have to really take for the, their day to day life. Next slide. Then the third one is energy balance. <clears throat> In the energy balance, we always say that we have to balance our energy. Uh, better to if we are having the less than 1300 kilocal for the normal person it is then very difficult to maintain the optimum nutrition at the same time we have to look at the lean body mass this is very important with, when we are trying to live longer healthy and live longer to maintain the quality life we need more muscles than fat so this is something very important and the, at the same time experience in hunger because we should not eat every time every time of the day because at least people should really experience hunger. This is a new research. They say people have to kind of, I mean, this is not the kind of intermittent fasting that like or fasting for the long hours. This is something that in between meal, you should not that fill up with a lot of snacks and things that at least experience a hunger. And the no constant eating, this is something like better to keep it for the three times a day rather than because snacks are not necessary for the people um, if they don't have any other problems. And the, at the same time, diets lower in the fat and the specially unsaturated fat. Uh, and other uh, one is a plant food are more protective 
uh, than the because it has more fiber and the more protective kind of nutrients. Next slide. The fourth one, I thought that I should really come up with the limiting the supernormal stimuli. So we know all these supernormal stimuli are the uh, salt, sugar, and the fat. And especially even the, when you are using non-caloric sweeteners, which are also really leading us to the eat more. And the, at the same time, um, now uh, the, even the fructose and the fructose we are getting from the fruit, but we are in the soup as when we take sucrose and the high fructose corn syrup and things, then what happens is that even inside the body, endogenous production of fructose will happen. So now the new research say that it will really go as a brain stimuli and the it will really for the dementia and everything that it will go. So this is not taking fructose from the fruit, but when you take sucrose and the other things, it will be converted to the fructose inside the body. So this is the another uh, things we have to always think about. If we want to live longer, we have to really reduce the amount of salt, sugar and the fat in our diet. Next slide. Um, fifth one is some more plant food. I mean, this is obviously, but the amount of the farm plant food that we should eat per day, five to nine servings per day, one serving is about half a cup. So, you know, this is a big amount, but if we are distributing through the three meals per day, this is nothing. And especially that we have to think about the color, taste, smell, fragrance. These are very important. And the, because which contain the phytochemicals and these are protectors, it has added antioxidant and it is anti-inflammatory at the same time we have to really think about the detoxification of our systems so which will enhance the detoxification at the same time the uh, now the current evidence is uh, whenever our environment it has a, a stress the this plant take the environmental stress so what happens is the plant develop the resistance system so then the, we will also get the same thing uh, from plant because plant try to adapt for the environment. And then the other thing is especially the sulfur compounds, um, which will also help with the detoxification. This is the sulfur containing plants, are the broccoli, cabbage, tradish, and the leeks and things. And the especially they say more eat, more better. At the same time, the uh, undercooking is much better because Sri Lanka, we overcook the things and the most of the things are destroyed that uh, when it come to the table. At the same time, the acid-base balance, which is also we have to think about because when you are eating more um, uh, animal food, that your uh, the food uh, is becoming the more acidic. So then we have to maintain the acid-base balance also. So for that, plant is the one that which will help to maintain our uh, acid-base balance. Next slide. Uh, six one means the big colors. I think we have to think of big colors and the more colorful, more better. At the deep orange, which has vitamin A, dark green vegetables, then the spinach, broccoli, squash, and all sort of uh, things like uh, um, this uh, scenic acri and all sort of things are also they are like squash. And then the, these are the uh, kind of uh, things we have to think about because adding colors to your diet and the, each and every color will give us a super nutrient and then it will really help us to live longer. Uh, so next one. Uh, the next one per month. Uh, then the uh, other uh, seventh one is uh, getting fiber. I think this is fiber. We know that fiber and the Sri Lanka fiber is not a big issue. If we eat uh, rice, pol sambal and the paripu, you will dal, you will get your enough uh, fiber. But what fiber we need? And the, the fibers are rich in most of the food in Sri Lankan uh, normal food. But we have to think about the, uh, this fiber will help us to for the low GI and the weight gain, but the soluble fiber. This is what which is lacking in our diet sometimes. Because we have to have a kind of a great amount of soluble fiber also, because which is the one that which will help us to lower our cholesterol as well as we have to think about our gut bacteria because gut health is the most important thing now. Nowadays, every disease is they are going to relate it to the gut health. So we have to feed our bacteria and in the gut bacteria. So this is very important to have a soluble fiber. At the same time, what are the soluble fiber contained in food in Sri Lanka? Because carrot. Uh, of these um, uh, ladies' fingers and the sweet potatoes and the, all these things are having soluble fibers. Next one. Um, then the seventh one is lower the glycemic load. Um, and uh, this is something we have to always think about because now when we take the, the cup of rice and it has about 20 uh, about the glycemic load 
and we say that daily glycemic load better keep it is under 100 so you know that amount of rice we eat then the usually if we eat the three cups of rice per day we get about 60 uh, about the glycemic load so we have another 40 uh, so this is the things that it's important to balance with the looking at the glycemic load now as this picture says and says then the watermelon every time people say watermelon is not good for diabetes but you can see uh, it has a lot of fiber and things and though the gi is high but they are the glycemic load is low so this is something very important because glycemic load is the one which is more important than glycemic index uh, because this is the one which is associated with the, all these uh, chronic diseases like cancers and the heart diseases. Next one. Um, the other one is reduced inflammation. So this is something very important because all the most of the diseases are related to the inflammation. That is the new theory. And then the how... Um, uh, what are these inflammatory uh, food and the, what are the how are we going to eliminate it? So then the main inflammatory food that they consider it's are the fat and the, then the reducing the fatty food and the eating more fish and the sweets and the sugar. That's another inflammatory food. And then eating plenty of vegetables and the decreasing meat. You can eat the little amount of meat, not the big amount of meat. And the other one is uh, omega-6 and the, that is we are getting from this corn, corn oil and the sunflower oil and all these things. Those are very pro-inflammatory. So decreasing the food with uh, all this um, uh, oil and the omega-3, this is which is very lacking in Sri Lankan diet, which is the one which is anti-inflammatory because adding small fish and the nuts and the avocado and things into the, our diet. But this is the one which is really lacking in our diet. So we have to really restructure our diet to get the more anti-inflammatory food into our diet. Next slide. And the, uh, the other one is choosing healthy fats. That this is a bit uh, connected to the previous uh, one. But here that we had to really look at what fat. Because currently we are eating too much of uh, saturated fat. Um, because at the same time the fat is soluble with the contaminate with a lot of contaminants also. So this is what this pesticide and everything is get contaminated with the fats also. When you are eating more fat and the, the if your food is not really getting contaminated and if you don't know about your pesticide then thing, you are getting more contaminants. So this is uh, the what they say go for the lower chain of the food chain because it's a home garden and things are important in that case. And then the um, uh, other thing is saturated and the hydrogenated um, fat. The, this is uh, something Sri Lanka, we are eating as a saturated coconut milk, coconut oil. On top of that, we are having the milk powder. All these three are saturated fat. But at the same time, we are not balancing with the uh, unsaturated fatty acids. So this is something we have to think about. At the same time, rancid fat. So the most of our oil in the market are rancid. And uh, sometimes uh, the meat and the, sometimes these uh, people are very concerned about these daily meats and the age meats and the things in the some of the society people. And the, those are the things that which consider as a rancid fat and the, these are not a kind of good one. And the, we have to think about the healthy fat which is freely available in Sri Lanka as avocado. So the uh, this is if we have a half avocado per day, we can really balance our uh, healthy fat in our diet. Next one and the healthy bone so this is another thing we always want because if we want to live long if we don't have a healthy bone no point in living with the fractures so one is the calcium so the calcium the main problem is um, uh, people are taking a lot of calcium and the and the, even the calcium rich foods are there as well as the bioavailability so the especially at the same time towards after a certain age most of the people are taking antacid so these antacids are really decreasing the calcium absorption uh, because of the less uh, stomach acidity. And the other things we are always talking about the vitamin D and sun. At the same time, we have to have a sun protection. At the same time, at least uh, staying in the 10 to 15 minutes in the sun and get our adequate amount of vitamin D. So these things should be balanced. So that's and the, especially with the age and the, from the beginning, I think to get in the sufficient quantity of vitamin D is very important to maintain our healthy bond. Next one. Uh, then the protein. So I thought um, Chaturanga will talk about the, with the exercise and protein. I put in the protein to the end, but the sufficient protein, this is very much needed about the 40 to 50 gram per day. I have really listed out here the vegetarian options and the non-vegetarian options. 
you can see the amounts that we are eating usually and the how much of the protein we are getting. It's very hard to get the protein whenever we need. At the same time, the how is the, some protein, the what amino acids are missing and the, uh, how are we going to complement each other because otherwise we won't get the enough uh, um, amino acids in the essential amino acids to maintain our muscle structure. So this is something very important that you can see the rice, which is lack of lysine, but at the same time, uh, you can get the um, lysine from the some other uh, things like legumes. So this is the kind of complementing each other um, as well as to taking the uh, protein from different kind of food per day to get the uh, sufficient quantity to maintain our muscle mass. Next one. And the other thing is the food and mood. And this is also very important with the life and the be happy. And the, to be happy, you, will, you have to shift your mood. And the, this is the, another thing. B vitamin is the most important things because with the deficiencies, you get irritability and the quarrelsome. So maybe some of the reasons we are also having. And the B12 deficiency, that is another thing because the, with this which come up with the, with the age and the, that is due to inadequate absorption. And the, especially in Sri Lanka, that overcooking and the, some, a lot of people use the, this antacid as a routine. So these are the kind of common problems that they get it with the vitamin B. So this is, we have to be really think about the people who are using antacid, whether it is necessary and the, how it uh, affect their uh, kind of uh, diet. Next one. And the bottom line. I think my time is running up and the bottom line and the, we have to drink pure water. This is much necessary, at least two liters of water uh, for the detoxification and for everything you need water and the, because to prevent your cell dehydration and the, um, uh, to prevent the uh, uh, this contaminants and everything that water is the best source. At the same time, eat slower and the exercise, I think it will be covered by uh, Chaturanga. And um, yeah, so this is something is very important for the everyday and the throughout the life. Uh, next one. Uh, so with that, I think uh, this is uh, uh, one of the charts. I just want to show that this is something that came from the British Nutrition Foundation. Anyone can look at it. How that each and every vitamin is helpful in the body system, as well as what are the kind of uh, food items which are rich with these items, just to show you the for the reference. Next one. Um, so the, with that, I'm ending my presentation. So with that, diet to live longer are available to everyone, everywhere, and they are really not complicated, but you have to implement them. So this is what's very important. So thank you very much for your uh, patient hearing.